Maybe today let's try first with the roll across the neck. Cross the neck. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to class. And we're going to start laying down with our shoulder blades across the roller. So we'll come down here. If you have a hoodie or a long hair, you can see down it up. You should do that now. And then support the head with the hands. And here we can just begin to lay back in extension over your roller with the whole and pull back into your hands. Exhale, chin to chest, pull yourself up, upper right curl, tail pulls up two, and the elbows pull together and you towards your belly. And then you arch back. Wait, put a little bit of roller here and extension, so the stretch to the abs. Exhale, forward, chin to chest, press your waist down as the tail rises, and we go back again. Arching over, let the head be heavy into your hands. Chin to chest, you can use the hands to tip the head. Also use the muscles in your neck and then the abdominal wall. We're going back one more time. Working back like so. The chest opens as the elbows fall, widen down to the floor. And then exhale round in the back, coming up. Next, we'll stand into our feet, lift the hips, and we'll roll from the top of the shoulders to the base of the rib cage. Stay on your ribs. And then as we pull the knees forward, lift the hips, drop the head. Go into extension here, head up, chin to chest, upper up curl as you roll slowly down towards the base of your ribs. And you're going back and forth with your time. Sometimes you're just not uh, coordinated mentally, physically at the beginning of the session. So if you just want to keep your spine flat, sort of inclined as you roll back and forth, you can. But adding the extension here and then the flexion as you come up and go towards the bottom of the rib cage gives you more pressure, more weight, more massage into the back muscles and the shoulder muscles that may be feeling tight and tense. So if you can coordinate that movement, that actually feels better. Yeah, you wouldn't think it'd be hard, but if you get off, I'm starting the extension in the wrong place, it gets really confusing for the body. In there myself. And then we're coming back to just be right on to the base of the shoulder blades. Rotate to the right, hips up, and then go back and forth, up and down along the outer edge of the shoulder blade. This can feel a little tight and tense. That's the, the lap that you're going on. And then we'll twist the other side. Try to pick up one shoulder blades or both weight from your body, sit down, press it into the roller. You get a deeper tissue massage like so. Also, let's go back to the first side and don't go as far. So try to feel the inside edge, purely the top inner edge of the scapula. It's the right one for me. And if you hang your head back and really lift your head up, you should be able to find the medial edge of that shoulder blade, that's where your levator scap comes in, where the neck muscles that gets overworked when your body's really, really tense and stressed. And then we can tip over to the other side. And again, we're focusing on the medial edge of the blade here. It's about two inches from your spine. And then come back to center, lower the hips. And then we can roll up to sitting. Okay, let's place the roller now under our hips. So bring bring it across under your knees. Pull your spine down using your core to come down to fold. And then bend your feet, head down. Lift your hips up to go across under your sacrum or under the widest parts of your glute. Holding the roller with your hands so you can slip away. We inhale to pick up one knee, exhale to pick up the other. And then let's bring the knees over to the right, turning it to the left, the shoulder heavy. Exhale, pick up your right hip bone, press to roll across to the left with the legs. Take a massage into the glute, and the right shoulder is down, your head turns to the right. And now again, instead of like wagging the knees from one side to the other, 
think of rotating the pelvis by pulling the left hip bone up. You'll feel the work in your oblique abdominals. Continue pulling the left hip across the body so the knees fall over to the right. You may want to press down with your arms gently as you pick the right hip up. So if you can use your obliques to tip the pelvis, to rotate the pelvic girdle here, the lower part of the body, and the legs pressing together lightly, zip together here, going side to side. And when you do that, of course, it feels good to turn your head in the other direction. It doesn't have to be extreme. You just want to feel a little bit of rotation here in the neck. We're going to do one more set. And once we get over to the right, we'll pause there and do some circles with the knees. Massage out your right glute. And then reverse the circles. Come back to center and then over to the left. And then circle right here. Reverse the circles now. And we're, we're circling to try to change the, the angle of the pressure into the glute. So sometimes you can feel the tighter, you know, closer to the SI joint, sometimes more lateral. And then back to center, lower your feet and adjust the roller. Even if you just spin it underneath you, you'll be on a fresh spot. And here we pull one knee in, exhale, pull the other one in. So lift the legs up to the ceiling, soft point. Right leg back, left leg forward for your scissors. Get the stretch and then inhale, sweep them back and forth again. So they swish by each other, toes soft, point through the air, a little bit of space between the toes. You don't want to over grip or over point. We do want to feel that length in the leg as it slides through this air above you. And which is long out in front of you. So we get the stretch in the hamstring. And then, of course, the stretch is a quad in the hip. Lift. Do one more of these. Bring both legs up to the ceiling. Exhale, rotate to pull the legs apart sideways. And then exhale, pull the legs together, lifting the heels together and up. Open again. Exhale, it works. Two more like this. We'll put the upper inner thigh to squeeze the legs together gently and then apart. And exhale, close. Alternate the legs, right leg first, hold the left leg vertical, bring it sideways. Exhale, drag it up. Move slowly enough that you feel the effort. And then you leave the right leg up and the left leg goes up to the side. Try not to tip the body, you're holding the pelvis level on the roller and exhale, bring the left leg up. And here we go again. You may have to be pulling the roller slightly towards your shoulders, towards your uh, chest, in order to prevent it from slipping out from underneath you and across the room. Left leg now. Lift it on the exhale. Okay. So from here, let's start your bicycle. So the right leg's going forward and down. Slide it back as the left leg extends. We're just trying to open up the hips with these legs to reach to the air above you and in front of you. Really working for the hip extension. And then we'll reverse and back pedal. Get one leg forward across the back. We'll lift it up high. Keep it straight as long as you can. Do you have to feel some work in the back of the leg, some length there? And then both legs up to the ceiling. Another scissor split, right leg back, left foot forward. And then we're going to circle the legs out and around. Rotating the legs here, each one drawing a C curve around half of an imaginary ball here. Suspend it in the air. Keep pulling the roller towards you. The hip joint should love this. Be sure you rotate the leg 
as you circle them. And one last one. Complete the circle, both legs up, and then fold the knees. Exhale, lower the feet down. Adjust the roller if you need to, or just want to. And here we'll stretch the right leg forward, stretch it out, and then the right arm back. Lengthen it here to stretch the whole right side of your body. Inhale into length from the hip bone crest, down the leg, off the foot, and from the hip bone crest along the torso and down the arm to the fingertips. The hip bone crest is the top of the mountain. The ring falls on the top and sun goes down one side, so it goes down the other side of the mountain. This should feel comfortable in your low back. If it doesn't, check the position of the roller or maybe bend the knee. If you're really tight, you might get too much extension. And it feels great, you'll just enjoy it. We can slide the leg back, bring the arm back. And now let's do the left side, stretching the leg forward first. Be a little bit bent if it's too extreme. And then if it feels fine, you can take the left arm back as well. Getting a stretch in your lap, stretching your chest, a stretch across the top of the foot. Just try to be sure that the leg hasn't drifted sideways. That both of the legs are really aligned with the hips so that the legs are about four to five inches apart. One more deep breath in and then exhale out. And then we can have both legs forward, both legs back. Lift the whole front of the body open now. This is just sort of the opposite of our everyday posture, which is why we spend the time to work on it here. Or at least enjoy it here. I don't know how much work it is actually. So two more breaths, deep inhale in, long exhale out, and do one more. Exhale completely. And slide the legs back, bring the arms forward, lift the hips up, push down through the feet, and slide the roller out to the knees. We'll play to the side, and then let's roll up to finish. Pull your left leg in, lift the right leg up, lift your head, on forward, come up to sitting here. Good. All right. And then sit upright, chest high, collarbones wide. Begin with the pelvic tuck, look down into your abs as you curl the tail up. Then roll back to your upper up curl. You can bring your arms forward or slide the hands down your leg. Pull the knees into tabletop, arms like the other side. Extend the legs and we come. Inhale and the legs can reach out to whatever level gives you the work you want in your core. Try to perch on the tip of the blades and keep the collarbones widening here as you breathe in and out. Look at your abs on the inhale, watch the belly expand and lift. On the exhale, watch it pull down and deep. If you exhale the longest amount possible, but you may feel that transverse abdominal muscle knitting together, kind of wrapping around the lower part of the pelvic girdle across the area by your navel. And still keep pulling your head up and forward. Look down your nose into the abs. Let's press gently together. You can always adjust the height of your legs if you're bringing them up or taking them down as you warm up. And just one last breath here, full breath in, exhale it out. Pull the knees in, lay your hips back, and then just stretch the legs forward and the arms up to the ceiling and behind you. Keep the legs grounded here on the mat. Roll up. So we lift the arms, head back, chest, exhale, forward, curve over your legs, let the head reach out, the shoulders melt behind your back, and then roll back, articulate your spine, one vertebra after the next, the arms at whatever height gives you control or gives you a challenge, 
The arms slide back by your ears again. Open up that front line. Bring your arms forward, head, neck, chest, exhale before you pick up the ribs. Try to get the curve in your back. So work through your abs and you're not only working from your hip flexors. Take a deep dive forward with the shoulders melting behind you and around to the front of the chest. We're curving on back now again. Push out for your feet, legs together. If possible, you want to lengthen out through your heels. Then you're rolling the pelvic girdle around the fingers. Come down and yawn the body open to the sky. Let's do one more like this. Arms lift, head neck, shoulders exhale. The shoulders will come a little forward, but they're not hunching up by the ears, right? It's a question of degree. You want to move the scapula on the back so that the spine can move forward in flexion. And then as you go back, lengthen up here. Let's bring the rear end with you as you go. Burn your weight into the ground. Then lift the arms and then circle the arms around. So you have to hold it out. All right, so we'll start with the right leg. First, just pull it into your chest and brace it in. Pull it tight. And then we'll place the center of the band on the ball of the foot and the arch. Lift the leg up to the ceiling. Elbows pulled down by your waist. And you feel the stretch in the leg. Bend the knee if you need to, but feel that length into the hip string as the leg reaches high. The soft point with the foot, and we start the circles. Inhale across the body, exhale, go low, out to the side, or out, up to the ceiling. Reach again, push it away, hold the right hip down. The left side of the body is grounded as it reaches to the right. Short, deep inhale, long, long exhale. With the exhale, keep going, going, going to hold the abdominal contraction. Press the leg out into space. Keep reaching further and further with the foot. Draw the circle a little larger each time. You still need to keep the body grounded here and steady on the mat. So even while you're reaching, you're pulling back. Treat opposition and stability in your body. We come to the top of the leg and now reverse. I just like to pull it out to your right. Press everything on the left side into the floor. And so reach out around, drag the leg up to the ceiling, get the maximum stretch you body once, and then reach again. Follow the breath all the way around this big circle in the air. Let that support you. It also inspire you to reach further out through your foot into space. It's almost like you're drawing uh, a spiral. It goes further and further from the pelvic girdle with every repetition here. And one more time. The upper arms, the elbows, they press it into the back for more stability. Now here, we'll take the ends of the band in the right hand, rotate the leg externally, left hand on the hip, keep it level and down as you bring the right leg out to the side and then rock it towards the shoulder and the leg. Then we exhale to pull the leg up to the ceiling, switch hands, the left hand back with the strap, right arm extends. Let's pull the leg over, lift the hip, the waist, the ribs. Just opens to the sky still. And you pull the leg back a little bit as you reach out long through your sits bone. Then give that leg a little internal rotation to increase the stretch. Maybe the hamstring across the hip, maybe it's the lower back. You can feel a lot of different places. Exhale, unwind, shoulder, waist, hip, coming down to lift the leg. Stretch again for the back leg of the leg and then fold the knee into your chest. Head in tight here and the left leg stretches down and out. You can release the right leg. Shake out both legs and let them just melt to the ground, relaxing to notice the different length in the right side, weight, where you're connected to the floor, where you're not compared to the left. So now we'll pull the left knee in, embrace it in tight. We can press it as long as the knee is happy with that. And then we'll take the band around the foot. Reach up to the ceiling, the leg. Bend the knee or not, just varies depending on the body and how it's feeling today. And we can do a self point to start the circle around across the body. Inhale, reach over, exhale, go low. Out around to the side and then up to the ceiling again. 
to stretch here, lengthen out through the band. So both the stretching of the band, the support of the band. Sort of also what makes the leg feel nice and buoyant as you circle. You want the feeling of energetic lift and reach. So the short inhale, start the exhale sooner. And the sooner you the better for the length of the exhale. And then now the work of the abdominal wall. We'll do one final circle here. Keep reaching, reaching, no matter what angle the leg is in space. We come to the top, we pause, we stretch, and then we rotate externally to take the leg out to the side, drag it across internal rotation. It comes back to neutral at the top and also the bottom of the movement. The arms are steady here into the ground, so you can stabilize the shoulders, the rib cage, and the hips. The full length of the right side of the body is now grounded, stable, sinking into the floor. Short, short inhale, long, slow exhale. With the abdominal contraction, hug you around your hips. And let's do one more. Keep pushing forward with the foot and back with the arms into the ground. And then, of course, the left hand will hold the strap. You can get the left leg out to the side if the right arm extends. Give the leg a little gentle bounce, very slow, very small. Keep pulling your right hip bone into the floor. Exhale to lift the leg up. Switch hands on the bed, cross the leg over, extend the left arm, and move out of that hand. The spiral up with the hip waist and lift to keep the shoulder blade down. Pull the leg towards your right shoulder and then rotate internally. Of course, if that's too much for you for any reason, you can always keep the hip grounded. Roll your hips down to the floor, lift the leg up to the ceiling, give it another little tug, and then we pull the knee in and the band is coming in. Off to the side. Hug the knee in one more time. Deliberately feel the deep crease of the hip and then stretch the leg forward and out. Shake it out. Feel the difference in your body now from a few minutes ago. And here we come up. So pull the right leg in, left leg lifts, pull forward and up, rolling like a ball. So you can embrace the legs in, elbows wide, lift it and forward. We curl the tail up to roll the shoulder blades. Lift in the air. Exhale, come back to balance point. So rolling back. You want the spine as round as possible. So if you breathe, your inhale starts the expansion of the back and roll. Your exhale brings you back up to balance on your sacrum. Do two more. You press the legs into hands, heads into legs. Gaze is down so the head and neck never touch the ground. And then into the ab series. So right hand to the ankle, left hand to the shin, on the right below the knee, extend the left leg up and out. Now push the legs away from you as you curve your back into the mat. You push up at the shin and out long, both straight leg. Kind of pull the leg in tight, elbows wide. Single leg stretch, inhale, you switch the leg. And exhale, switch again. We think of the legs doing this distant like action as they pull in and out on the same plane. They maintain their position in space along that line, directly from the hip across the leg. Do one more set. Use the connection hand to leg, leg to hand to breathe deep into your upper arm curl. Double leg stretch. Arms and legs lift to the ceiling. So go wide with the arms and brace the legs in and pull yourself up and get the connection. Of course, try to keep the feeling of lift through the upper arm curl. Even against the weight of your arms going back and the weight of your legs going forward. The position of the arms and legs is designed to challenge your ability to stay in your upper curl. If you fall flat, lift your arms and legs higher. If it's not enough work, take them out lower. You decide you work it. Now, scissors right leg up, right leg forward, look down at your midline, and we switch. And switch again. You can pop the one leg and exhale for the other. Again, track the leg straight out of the socket and lift it up to the step. Do one more set. 
and the left leg in the air. As you have the head is bring the right leg up. Upper up curl, chin to chest, elbows forward, down. So you press the legs together and you move them out slowly into space. Track your chest across this area, maybe slightly down the wall. Exhale and lift them up. This you're going to feel is a challenge for your core, right? You're going to feel the abs working hard to stabilize the pelvic girdle against the weight of your legs. You don't want to go into an arch back. You do want to feel the abs working as hard as possible. So the upper up curl ensures that you're working the upper abdominals. The work in the angle of the legs ensures the work in the low abdominals. And then the breath keeps you going. Just be careful that you don't go beyond the range that's appropriate for you right now. It changes with every breath, with every session you do. We'll do one more. We work slowly so we're not just using momentum and gravity to do the work for us. And now twist to the right and then to the left. Coming forward and up, away from your, the tip of your blades. Thinking of pulling the armpit to the inner thigh. It's not necessarily the flexion of the elbow that determines um, sort of the integrity of the exercise. A lot of times we just see people waving the elbows from one side to the other. We're really coming forward and up. So you work into the oblique abdominals. That's the purpose. Let's do one more time. So we can enjoy feeling those abs. Come back to center and lay yourself down and stretch the legs forward and the arms back. Congratulations on completing the app series. So from here, we roll up, lifting the head, neck, chest, arm choice two. Exhale, pull up and we open the legs for a slight stretch, bring the arms parallel to the ground at this intermediate level. So we press it down with the arms, lift the chest, head high. Look down your nose, tip your chin to the chest, and make the head and the neck and the upper back. It keeps leading so the work travels down the spine in a beautiful arc, bend down with your forehead coming down between the knees, at least in that direction, right? And then we sink down through the heels, the six bones, and stack the spine from the bottom to the top. You're lifting your back up against the wall. At the top, flip the heart high, look out at the horizon with a soft gaze. Down. Make sure you move the neck before you start moving from, say, your waist or the base of your ribs. The reason we're really um, talking about that is that you're trying to get the most mobility through every single joint in your spine that's appropriate for this particular movement. You could feel if it came up to the top and just started at your waist. It would feel very different and it wouldn't be the flexibility and the strength we're looking for in the muscles in our back. So look down, round it over again. Suck the waist back as you pull forward with the head. And then let's just hold on to the ankles, the feet, whatever you can do, the calves, even the thighs. Just breathe into the stretch. We're coming up next for right the balance and rocker. So if you're just sitting on the yoga block or some books, Get rid of them now, and we're going to end up sitting near the front of your mat. Arms between your legs, hands around the ankles, unless you still want to do it with your hands behind your thighs. That's an, another option. So lift the tail rock back onto your sacrum, lift into your abs, round your back. The right leg extends up, shoulders relax, and exhale, pull it down. And now the left leg extends, reach here, and exhale, lower. Right up again. Hold that balance point. And now the left. And pull it back. Both legs. They both go up, narrow V, shoulder width feet, and then pull the heels together. Pull them back in towards your tailbone and you lift again. And bring your own back. We're going to lift and get ready to roll. Be sure you have room behind you. So we can hold on more to the outside of the ankle or calf. Curl the tail up, lift the tail and roll to your shoulder blades. Exhale forward and come up to balance. So we roll back and forward. Good. This has come a long way since we started the semester. We want to keep expanding the back so that 
curve it, we will as a little bit to come up, and we'll just do one more. Good work. Close the legs. And then you can release the arms, or you can track the arms down the back of your legs. We can reach it out into the feet, curve your spine down, arms at your side, lift the legs. So, of course, you can use the TheraBand around your feet, or you can take a ball between the inside edges of your feet. That's another way to have a work into your abs. But now we're going to start keeping the pelvis grounded. Take the legs over to the right, forward and around to the left. Pull them back up to the ceiling. That's the end of that breath. So inhale, we reverse the direction, going left, exhale, around and down, over to the right, back up to the top. Do you remember when we we're doing the knee swings on the roller? You still want to feel the obliques here, working to support the pelvis down against the weight of your legs. And so every time you bring your legs out to the side, you're aware that you've got to put more weight into the opposite hip to hold the pelvis level here and steady. And the size of the movement is going to depend not only on the flexibility of the muscles around your hips, but also on your ability to stabilize the torso. We do one more set. Focus on the feeling of rolling around the curve of the sacrum. And then reversing that to imprint along the SI joints. Good work. Now pull the knees into your chest. Hug it in and we roll forward and up for soft. Let's open again. Hamstrings will go back up tight. Elevate your hips. And then we bring the arms out to the side. Let's spin to the right and dive over. That arm reaches long. You open the chest and try to pull that right shoulder blade across the back and down. Lift to come upright, heart high, unwind, and spin to your left. Back of the hand to the outside of the leg. Now here as you go to the left, press down through your right knee, your right six foot, and then pull your left shoulder away from your hips. Come upright, center, and then spin. Sometimes when people do this, they feel like little snap, crackle, pop sounds along their spine. And that is normally considered just a good thing, like you're releasing some of uh, the tension in the muscles and the ligaments. Up, unwind, and one more step. You reach out with the halo as well as reaching back with the arms for straight. Up, center one more time to the left. Step here, stretch it out long. And then come up, unwind the body, lower the arms, close the leg, we're flipping over. We're using the roller for swing. So as you flip onto your stomach, you can extend the arms out into the roller, halfway down between elbow and wrist. You're between the arms, head off the ground. So we're going to pull back from the shoulder blades, pull forward with the head of the heart, and come up with your gaze off the wall in front of you, still the stretch in the abs. And then zip your belly into the mat, from the pubic bone to the navel, to the ribs, to the chest, and then the ears and the head flow between the arms. Pull back the collarbones, go wide, so the shoulders pull down your back. Your heart rises and expands. Legs stay grounded. And you work it down, like so much rolling a bowling ball up your back, from your sacrum, along your spine, the weight of the ball lowers you inch by inch, one vertebra after the next. Do it one more time, pull the blades back, pull them together as you rise, trying to squeeze the back of the body. It gets shorter and narrow so you can expand and lengthen the front of the body. And then we bring it back down. All right, now just here, we're gonna pull back. So back in the child's pose. Lift your back, lift your head hang. And then we'll come forward for single leg hips. So you can push the roller aside. 
and forward onto your forearms. Either make fists or press the palms into the ground, whatever you prefer. And you pull back with the elbows like you're pushing the back towards your feet and pull the chest forward and up, away from the pubic bone pressing into the mat. Take the right heel in, one, two, and down, now the left, press one, two, and down, now the right again. Go ahead, you stretch the quad with every pulse. Keep looking up, heart expands, spread the chest open, and lift it to the ceiling. We're going to keep those arms actively pushing down and back to get a feeling of propelling the chest forward and lifting. The front of the pelvis pushes into the ground like it's bolted to the floor. That'll be sure that you help open up your hip flexors here while you're in extension away from the hip. And then lower the legs, lay down on your side, turn your head to the right. Overlap your hands on the rib cage and drop the elbows. We take a deep breath in and then a deep exhale. We kick the foot legs one, two, three. The shins at the top of the feet press into the floor, the arms go back, where you stay center and lift it. Lift your chest, lift your shoulders, lift your eyes, come down and look to the left. Hands high, elbows drop. Three beats. Front of the pelvis presses into the ground like it's connected to the floor, and then you go long with the arms, come up as high as you can with the chest. And then down we go to look right again. Exhale the air out of your lungs with every beat. Legs down, lift again. Reach along with your fingers towards your toes. If the hands are too high, then we'll drop your chest down. And then down we go to look left. One more set here. Three pulses, front of the legs press into the ground, then you bring the feet into the floor, gaze forward, lift up, we end in the lift. And then you lower and slide the armpits, push up and into your child pose. Round the back, stretch it out, and stack the spine bottom to top. Okay, so we're gonna play a little bit with the neck pull today. So you wanna be careful with this one. Right, because it starts sitting upright with the legs apart about five inches and it has behind the head. So we lift up, we try to extend the neck by having the thumb around the occipital ridge, pull the head high to pull that deep compression in your spine. So with the first bit, you go back in the plank and then you quickly realize you can't maintain that. So you tuck, pull the elbows together and forward, and you may even bring the arms forward. So you roll to the ground, hitting every vertebra into the floor. Come up. Now, eventually, you would have your hands behind your head, but from the way down and the way up. So, what we typically start with, you start with bringing the fist into the palm, a straight line, elbow to elbow. Lift your head, neck, and chest. Exhale. Push the arms into each other. Curve your way over, and as soon as you can, bring the hands behind your head. And instead of pushing the head down, which would be bad for the cervical spine, which is a no-no, right? You're going to reach the head out long and feel that you're using the thumbs to propel the head forward out over the feet so you feel that length in your spine. And then we stack the spine up bottom to top. Now, this is substantially easier if you have ankle weights on, right? Which um, you can go get if you want. Or we can continue. So... We're going to start here, lift up. Or, of course, if you're working with a partner, you can have them hold your feet down. So, we lean back. Plank first, top feet where you need to. Elbows can come forward. You can keep the hands by your head. If you can control yourself down, and if you can't, because you're bringing arms forward, right? And then you try to remember which hand was the fist and which hand was the socket. And then we lift, coming up, exhale. You can feel when you punch the hands into each other that you feel that we're connecting you to your last to your serratus, to your external oblique. Now you should dive over, pull the head long. Stack the spine coming up. We're just gonna do one more of these. So you start, try to lift up through your halo. Use the pull of the head around the skull. See if you're feeling a lift. It is called neck pull. And the reason why is we want to decompress the spine. So we hinge back, top, 
Now, if you pull the elbows forward, you also round the upper back more. So leg it up to your heels, come down, use your core to bring you down, prepare forward, and then we're coming up one more time, this thing to come. Lift to come up, and then dive forward, stretch the spine as you lift the belly up into that curve. And then we stack from the bottom to the top. Yay, good, right? So um, there are clients of mine, including some here, who can do this with their hands behind their head, all the way down and all the way up. That takes a lot of practice, a lot of time. Um, so that would be an eventual goal, but really the immediate goal is to just feel the work in your core, protect your spine and kind of just challenge yourself a little bit at a time. But using like the ankle weights there, that's a really good way to start to build some strength into the movement, right? So it's something you can play with, um, you know, when, when you're doing your practice on your own too. Okay, so anyway, so we're going back down and into shoulder bridge. So the arms forward, kind of squeeze the arms around the chest, roll down. It's easier with the arms lower, right, than it is with the hands higher. Because with the hands behind your head, that leads extra load away from the center. Anyhow, so bring the feet back, knees back, spread your feet into the floor, the arms like the top spread into the ground as well. And we begin with the pelvic tuck, we curl the tuck forward, the knees forward and up. You can even push down through the top of the shoulders, the outer arm, to pull the blades together and get your hips to lift a little higher. From here, let's pull the right knee into your chest, extend the foot up to the ceiling. And then we're just going to bend the knee, keep lifting up through the knee and the hip, and then lower the foot down. Screw off the pelvis by pushing down through both feet and both arms. Then shift your weight a little to the right foot. We're going to pick up the left hip bone and then pick up the left knee. Lift the foot to the ceiling to try to keep the left pelvic half in the air. Pull the knee up to keep that left pelvic half even with the right one. Lower the foot, press to the foot, screw off the pelvis if it's dropped. And now we're rolling down. So curve your way down here, come all the way down. That's one of the ways to practice building strength into this movement with asymmetrical support for your legs. Now we're gonna go up and add some kicks. So we pull back with the heels, or you can repeat what we just did. So rock the pelvis, pull the tail on the knees forward, push down into the outer arms, lift your chest, lift your hips higher, pull the right knee in, extend the leg, Point the foot to go down, flex the foot to go up. Point down, flex lift. We're gonna feel the inner edge of your standing foot and thigh chill. Point the foot, bend the knee, the up, hip up, lower the foot, heel goes down, and then you stay up actually. I want you to roll down, but you will. So now we're gonna put weight into the right foot, lift the hips higher, use your glutes. Pull the right, sorry, the left knee in, extend the leg up. Point, go down with the leg, flex to lift it. Point down, flex up. One more, and up. Point the foot, bend the knee, lift the knee, lift the hip. Foot lowers down, push to the ground with both feet, and now roll to the inner arms, widen your back, curve your spine down. So that is a huge challenge, the idea of like holding the hips in the air and only having, you know, two, going from two legs to one leg for points of support it's very very hard to sort of practice so we're doing one more we're going to roll up pull the hips forward pull the tail up stand in your arms mm -hmm. and your legs pull the shoulder blades together underneath you to get the chest up as high as you can and now we pull the left knee in extend the foot up flex the foot tap it down point to lift it flex to lower Point to lift, one more. Every lift of the leg is your chest to lift the hip, bend the knee, lower the foot, hip up, pull the right knee in, extend the leg up, flex down, point lift, flex down, point up, and flex down, point lift here, bend the knee, foot down, pelvis level at the top of the hip, and then you roll yourself down. You roll to the inner arm, the shoulders will curve up a little bit so you can break the body down into the mat. 
Good. We will forward it up for slight twist. Again, here you would elevate your hips if that works better for you. And feet it together, flex. Arms out to the side. Push the arms slightly down. Also, be sure the hands are slightly forward so that when you look straight ahead, you can see your fingertips through your peripheral gaze. Rotate to the right and pulse one, two, three. Lift to center and then to the left. Row one, two, three. Come back to center. So the opposite sit bone gets bolted into the floor. Come back. Bend the knees if you need to, to keep yourself perched right on your two sit bones. If you end up rounding the back, you're not going to get a, feel, a good feeling in your spine when you rotate. And center, and let the arms lower down. Okay, uh, Jacqueline. So this is where we go up and over into sort of a shoulder stand. So you're welcome to use the roller or yoga blocks under your hips. Roll is usually easier because you have something to hold onto or just go from the ground. I'm gonna demo one that I may walk through the room and see if I can help anybody. So you roll back. If you're holding the roller, be sure you hold it and press down into it. So we pull the knees into the chest, extend the legs up. Now it's gonna be helpful to take the legs a little bit forward you have a little momentum to get yourself going. Bring legs up and over, push to the hands, come up at the hips, and the legs start low. Then if you want, you can try to lift the hips and the feet up towards the ceiling, lower them down, and then roll your spine out. Really push the mat away from you, get to go with your hands as you're lowering the spine. As you progress, the legs go up higher, and there's not that low pike up, pike down with the legs. You would just push down automatically go up. Remember with this, your gaze is always up and slightly back. You really find that work into your hands, let the shoulders curve up so you can bend your spine on the flexing down into the floor. I'm just gonna take a look around the room. You can use an inhale and exhale in each direction. You're almost there. I am almost there. Yeah, exactly. So let's sweep the legs together. Give yourself a big sweep of the legs up and over. Push down. Exhale. There, you did it. Go easy. Try to lift your heart. There it is. And then bring yourself down. Yeah, that's so true. Good job. Thanks. Yeah. And one of the one of the things you want to think about when you're up in the air is you're not just letting go of the hips, the butt just like rock into your body. You want to try to get a feeling of lift up through the tailbone, up from like the waistline up into the hips, right? Just like that. So there's an energy up as well as a press down. You know, and if it's getting easy to do on the on the roller, maybe it's time to start thinking about getting the roller out from underneath you. This is good. And then be sure you're really pressing into the arms on the way down so that you have control. And also let the shoulders curve up a little bit so that you're not going into extension and then trying to flex the spine down. Very, very good. Okay, so we're skipping side hips today. I think we did all of them on yesterday's um, recording so you can always if you want if you're watching the recording just stop and throw them in now but we're going to work through teasers next so starting at the top so come up to sitting and you can bring your hands to the back of your thighs begin with the pelvic top pick up your feet for most women toes at eye level is where we want to be now, the first thing you have to really remember is that you've got to get that low back down before you start pushing the legs away. Because if you don't, if you push the legs away too far, what's the back going to do? It's going to flatten and then arch. So the first thing we want to do is not just lean back, but do that pelvic tuck again. So the pelvis is rotating here, so you curl the tail up. You can push out with your legs into your hands for some support, 
and then curve your back down into the mat, into the floor. And then you can start to extend the legs or just lower the feet down. So you want your feet touching when you're in the upper arm curl, and then you release that. And that's true whether you're doing this with a bent knee or with straight legs. So from here, we can start to come up again. So pull the knees into your chest. This is the easy way to get up. So everyone can do this. You hold on to the back of your thighs, lift your head, neck, and chest, elbows wide. Then you come forward, you push the legs away, and rock forward and up to your balance point. Yeah, good. And then if you want, you can see what it feels like to extend the legs. And then maybe bring the arms up and hold that balance. This will start to strengthen you into the teeth of pose. Bring your hands to the thighs, bend your knees. And now here we're rolling again. So curl the tail up and print the load back down. So you have to roll onto the sacrum. Maybe slide your hands towards your sits bones as the knees reach out. But you've got to bend your spine into the mat. Like you're not really safe until so you get the waistline down and then you can maybe push the legs away. The heels would touch when the blades do. You're in your upper curl. That's essential to protect the low back. And then from here, palms up, arms long at your side. Slide the arms forward to come to your upper curl. Scoop yourself up. You can pull the legs up at eye level, bend the knees if you need to, and then come up to your balance. And then to bring it back down, do one of the options we've done before, curl the tail up, round your back. Then only when you get down to sort of the waistline, you can really reach the legs out, get the heels down where the blades are, lay yourself down. Everyone doing okay? I know this is a lot of work and it's important, it's essential really, to get that rotation of the pelvis at the beginning of the movement when you're coming down so that you protect your spine. You don't want to arch with the full load of your legs in front of you and the weight of your rib cage and head behind the curve, right? So we're just doing one more to come up. So you can fold the knees in, you can do the legs straight, whichever version works for you. Coming up, chin the chest, slide the arms forward, you can bring your hands along the back of the legs, bend the knees in if you wish to, or go straight. Find that balance point, good, and then bend your knees, to the ground, open the knees and take it back forward. Because when you're learning it, it's not always perfect, right? Sometimes we wish it was, but you know, we learn a lot from the journey. So here we're gonna come upright and then we're moving back into hip circles. So hip circles are sort of um, corkscrew, they are corkscrew, but with the body elevated. So we're gonna go back onto our elbows. And then here, you want to really pull the waist down and back so that you're going into a pelvic tuck and you're feeling a stretch here above the sacrum into the low back area. Do you feel it? Uh -huh. And it's almost like you're trying to slide back so that your leggings get pulled off of your hips. Then we pull one knee in, the other knee in, try to keep that feeling of a pelvic tuck, push down with your arms, lift the legs. Small circles to start. Inhale to the right, exhale around to the left, complete at the top and then go to the left. You can also bend your knees here. You wanna actually, I'm looking at you, but you should be looking down at your abs so that the neck is in flexion and that will help you keep the rest of the body in flexion. We only do three sets. I really wasn't counting because I was chatting. So I'm gonna do one more set. And so are you. Eventually the legs go in a larger circle, but only when you feel like you can protect your spine. Okay, and then we fold the knees and we'll come up. So here we are. Oh, we still have time for swimming. So option to either use the roller or not. Uh, I'm gonna use it. And onto your stomachs. That looked like a popular choice. So reaching out long with the arms, long with the legs in opposite directions. If you're using the roller, your ears are between your arms again. So we're going to pull the shoulder blades back, pull the chest up, and start kicking the legs from the glutes. The front of the pelvis pushes into the floor. If you want to try lifting one arm and then the other off the roller, that'll help building some strength into the mid back. And then we can sink back down and then come back into child's pose. 
head hangs low here, stretch out your back. Stack your spine from the bottom to the top. Okay, so we're going to see our next. This is um, another one of the rolling exercises. So the knees are open, the hands go between the legs, and then wrap your hands around the ankle. So we're again going to curl the tail up, find your balance point on your sacrum, knees open wide, and you press the arm into the leg, the leg into the arm. Open and close the legs from the hips. So you pull the legs apart and together three times. Now once the legs are together, we roll. So chin to the chest, curl the tail up. Step one, two, or three. Once, twice, or not at all. You go up anywhere from zero to three times. So you clap when you're sitting here on your sacrum. You roll back and try to lift the tail in the air and clap. And then come back to where we start and clap again. So you round the back and then tap. I know, right? So this took me, it took me a really long time. Like rolling was never a problem. But what I had to learn from my own body was the feeling of lifting the tailbone up to kind of pause in midair to clap. And sometimes I do it really well and sometimes it doesn't happen, do you know? But that's sort of the idea. And you wanna end up like sort of balancing on your scapula with still the head off the ground. And that's important because that's something that happens in the more advanced rolling exercises too. So um, yeah, everyone feels good with that? So from here, let's practice a little bit of planking. We're gonna go into some side planks on your forearm. So for this one, here we take the top leg, bring it in front of the bottom one so the the top leg's heel is tucked into the base of the toes. You're on your side seam and you have your elbow just a little bit forward of your shoulder. Let's start with the fist pushing into the ground with your other hand. You're gonna shoot forward and up to bring your shoulder over the elbow. And then, so you might start a little bit bent. We're gonna come up and then push down with the bottom leg support the top one, press of the arm, See how that feels, and you want to use the bottom leg to push the top leg up. If it's if you want to, you can bring the top arm up and lift for the ceiling. Actually, look up and reach the hand for the sky. That will help keep the body elevated. Yes, good. And then you can lower the hand, lower the hips. Now to practice, if you find that you don't have the strength to do that quite yet, you can bring the top foot in front like figure four in the sidekick series, push to the arm and lift there. Because then you're gonna have a little bit more support. Try not to look at your feet, but look straight ahead. And you actively push your arms into the ground. And then you can come on down. Right, so we haven't really practiced this, but I wanna give you that chance to start working into some side strength in your planks, right? So now we're going up to the other side. So again, whichever leg is on the top is now coming in front. Heel into the base of the toes of the bottom leg. And you, know, you could press through the whole hand, but for people with wrist issues, it's better to have a fist. So again, the knee's slightly bent. You're coming up and forward, bring your shoulder right over the, the elbow. Feel that strength in your legs. And you want to distribute the weight. It's not all on your arm. Some of it's into the edges of your feet. And there's a lot of push down to get a lift through the serratus here at the bottom of the rib cage. Yep, use whatever version you want. And then eventually we lower down. Try to lower with control. Like if you get to the point where you're so tired to collapse, keep it up a little too long. You know, so you don't want to be slamming the hip bone into the floor. So it's useful to feel that. Do you feel good though? It's like, it's, it's, it makes you feel really strong. And if you do it, it will actually make you very, very strong here, both in the, in the shoulder girdle, but also in your core. Okay, so that's it for today. And we still have class um, here at the Matchbox next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we have about a month's break. Um, I know Max will be sending out notices about what the timing is like on that.
and I'll try to have the dates organized for you next time I see you. Okay. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for doing class.